um, which plans to integrate with Polkadot. But today he's talking about his new project, Catalosis, which is a, a financial um, a potential parachain that's going to be working on derivatives and a bunch of other stuff. So um, yeah, give it up for Reto. Okay, thanks very much. Um, great. Um, yeah, so so great to be here. Um, so yeah, as as mentioned, I'm, I'm one of the the co-founders of Catalasos, um, next to Bruno Franco and Sophie Radermacher, and um, so essentially, um, Catalasos is a is a standard framework for financial contracts. So it's it's a domain chain um, uh, built on Substrate, but I'm gonna. Um, talk about this soon. Let me let me just okay have a look at the time. Good. Um, okay, so so like the overview of this talk is essentially um, Catalasos, the blockchain, um, then the consensus algorithm which we have been researching, which is called uh, called Albatross, um, the virtual machine which is called Enso, um, the kind of functionality that you can do with Catalasos, um, and finally the toolkit that we that we are building. So maybe to start with, like, so this, this is incredibly research heavy, but incredibly not development heavy. heavy. So like um, just yesterday, like we published uh, the three papers. Um, so that's the, the paper of uh, Catalassos, the paper of Albatross, and the paper of Enzo. Um, you can have a look at, at catalassos.com. Um, but yeah, so the, the implementation is, is lacking a bit behind. Um, great. So, so yeah. So essentially, the the the, the basic building blocks of of Catalasos is um, so it's 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 using Substrate Core, um, and essentially, like it blocks in the consensus algorithm and the runtime. Um, the, the the runtime is essentially uh, a bunch of contract templates. I'm going to touch upon that in a in a moment. Um, and it's using an oracle. Um, so essentially, here we're collaborating with, with Chainlink um, to essentially use use their town crier. Um, and finally, like this is all interconnected uh, within Polkadot. So um, that obviously gives us more assets um, to like to derivatives on and so on. So, but like first, uh, like a, an explanation of, of, of this, I guess, slogan. So standard framework for financial contracts. Um, okay, so what, what is a financial contract? Um, essentially, a financial contract, uh, or financial contracts are mutual agreements between counterparties to exchange cash flows. So it's, it's really all about defining cash flows. Um, I mean, if, if you think about an ERC-20 token contract, then what, what this contract really does is, um, or fundamentally defines cash flow. Like how, how does money flow from one account to another account? Um, and so essentially like there, there is this, this um, research effort which is called Actus. And Actus is essentially like an algorithmic contract types unified standards. And this standard has been um, developed for, for close to three decades now. Um, like its, its main contributor is, is Willy Brammertz. And essentially, like what, what Willy Brammertz did is essentially like he looked very close into what finance is, like, like at cash flows. Um, like for, for any financial product, for any financial structure, for any uh, financial contract, essentially. And what he discovered is essentially um, that it all breaks down into, into a manageable amount of, of, of cash flow patterns. And he, he called those cash flow patterns contract types. Um, so that's really what, what I guess Octus is about and, and what Catalasus tries to implement is like this standard, um, which essentially discovered like there is a limited amount of cash flow patterns and it just codifies those patterns into, into um, financial contracts. 
Um, and so that, that's really interesting because, um, I mean, if, if you look at chemistry, like we had something similar there before, essentially like, um, but as, I guess what the periodic table did for chemistry um, is essentially like it, it took, it, it took essentially like, uh, like alchemy, like a pseudoscience into a proper science where, where using the elements, you actually could like predict chemical reactions and you could quantify things. And that's really what Octus is about. Like it's, it's, it moves finance from, from something where kind of everyone is implementing their own standards um, into like a, a unified holistic approach to finance. Um, so that's essentially the, the taxonomy of, of Actus. Um, it's, it's a total of, of 34 contracts. Um, and with, like those, those contracts can really be seen as like the basic building blocks. Like with those, with those um, contracts, like you can combine them because they're all, all they do really is define cash flows. And you can combine them more or less arbitrarily to like create virtually any financial product, you know, you know, uh, you know, bonds, loans, futures, you know, what, whatever you want, essentially. Um, and so, yeah, so like Octus has near complete coverage, like there are very exotic um, financial in instruments which are not covered, but, you know, for all intents and purposes, its, it's coverage is complete. Um, so yeah, so like luckily for us, um, this standard has been like implemented in a way that is very native to, to blockchains. So like the way these contract types have been defined is, is like with state and, and with state transition functions and which events, which really are just transactions, I guess, in, in, in blockchain world. Um, so that's, that's kind of like a lucky coincidence. So it's, the way it has been specified is very native to blockchains. Um, and so, yeah, so that's, that's essentially Catalasos. So like we use Substrate Core, um, we have our own consensus algorithm, which is Albatross, we have our own general purpose VM, which is Enso, um, and that kind of like, uh, and, and I guess, um, on top of Enzo, like we implement the, the Actus standard essentially. Um, yeah, so Catalysis enables and simplifies the creation of financial services that are non-consolidated just as fast, convenient, and interoperable. Um, then also, yeah, so uh, also very interesting, I guess, um, just published yesterday is the consensus algorithm, which, which uh, is called Albatross. Um, and that really has been like done in, in collaboration between, uh, I guess, my company and, and the NIMIC Foundation. Um, and its, its main contributors are like Bruno Franca and Dr. Pascal, Pascal Berang. Um, and it's, it's essentially like a, um, a speculative uh, BFT consensus algorithm. So, um, speculative BFT consensus algorithms are um, a class of classical consensus algorithms that have very high performance when compared to other algorithms like PBFT. Um, and they essentially have like two modes of operation, um, like an optimistic mode and a pessimistic mode. So, um, the optimistic mode is really like the it's based on the assumption, I guess, that the node kind of behave, um, they are kind of like well behaved and, and the pessimistic uh, node is like nodes are malicious. Um, so yeah, so Albatross is essentially um, a mix between PBFT and, and, and proof of stake. So it, it uses like PBFT to create macro blocks. Um, in, in the macro blocks are essentially like, um, like the, macro, the macro blocks which don't contain any transactions, they, they just define a validator set 
That validator set is, is uh, determined based on stake. Um, and it essentially um, has like a, a, a random number or seed. Um, and from that seed, so, so once we have the PBFT blocks which, with, with the validator set um, and the seed, um, we actually use the BLS signature um, as a verifiable, uh, verifiable random function to uh, determine the next seed, which essentially like determines which gets to sign a micro block. And so a micro block is essentially just contains the transactions, um, contains a seed. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Um, but they're, they're like single signs, so like its, its performance is very close to, um, to like, a, uh, like a, a single signed chain, I guess, or like, like, a, like a centralized system, really. Um, and yeah, so the, the idea really is um, that um, it's essentially like rather than never trust kind of attitude as, as it's kind of common in PBFT, it's kind of trust but verify approach. Um, so the, like the, the, the authorities of the microblocks, they just kind of can sign away um, and they're assumed to be trusted unless it's kind of proven otherwise. But like um, this, this way the, the speed is, is, I guess, uh, the performance is much better. Um, yeah, so as, as mentioned, kind of validator selection, um, verifiable um, random function based on BLS signature, um, which I guess is very elegant. Um, and yeah, so like a short comparison. Um, yeah, so Albatross is PFT, POS hybrid. Um, like, I guess, like, it's just compared to, like, I guess, two known um, consensus algorithm, one is, one is, one is uh, Algorand and the other is uh, Ouroboros. So Algorand is, is more like PBFT-like and Ouroboros is more like POS-like. Um, and So yeah, um, the comparisons, comparisons, I guess, to Algorand are that it's kind of, it uses PBFT and to do Ouroboros really it's, um, it's POS. Um, but the main difference, especially to, to Ouroboros is that it doesn't have this notion of, of time slots. Um, which, which really like in the optimistic case makes it faster than Ouroboros. Um, then the, the second novel concept, I guess, is, is the virtual machine, which is called Enzo. Um, also, like the paper has been published. Um, and so, yeah, so Enzo is supposed to be like a general purpose virtual machine. Um, and so, essentially, the idea of Enzo is to pack the app logic into the state rather than into the state transition function. Um, so I guess like Bitcoin is, is, a, is a almost trivial example where like the app logic is in the state transition function rather than in the state. Um, whereas, yeah, so, so the idea is like the entire, the entire um, app logic is, is in the state. Um, if you have like a general purpose VM, then you can update and modify the state much simpler, essentially. Um, and yeah, so some, some basic functionality, I guess, of, of Catalasus, really. Um, so like collateralized loan, so you just have like, uh, like essentially just two contract types of, of Actus. 
um, which is an annuity contract and a collateral contract. So like the example for, so an example here would um, be um, Alice wants to sell, or Alice wants to put up like a house that's kind of tokenized um, and wants to ask collateral and wants to get a loan from Bob. Um, or like margin trading is, is quite easily done. Um, and yeah, like, like short trading is essentially very similar to, to merchant trading as well. Um, yeah, same with futures trading. So futures trading, um, same as merchant trading, requires an oracle. Um, so that's essentially like done by Chainlink. Um, similar for options. And yeah, really like any combination thereof. Um, then, like a bit to the to the toolkit. Um, so, like the toolkit that we're building around um, Catalasos is kind of like uh, like this this image wallet, which is really a custodian solution. Um, we are building an exchange, which is called Agora Trade, and finally Catalasos. Um, yeah, so like the image wallet is really like. Um, this concept of you have a QR code and that QR code is a seed um, using the BIP44 standard, like we derive um, private keys and that works for pretty much any network. So like with that file, um, you can hold pretty much any cryptocurrency. So like you, you, can, you can imagine this file as like um, an Ethereum account, which, you know, with one account, you can hold all of these different ERC20 token um, with an image wallet you not just can hold all of these different ERC20 token, but you can hold Bitcoin, Litecoin, and pretty much any network. Uh, pretty much any coins of any network. Um, and so we use, we use that concept in, in our non-custodial exchange. Um, so non-custodial really means that um, in this, this exchange, like we separated the, the matching engine with the settlement engine. Um, so the matching engine is kind of centralized, but the settlement engine is decentralized. So like you never have to give up custody over your funds. Um, and that obviously like works very well with, with, the, with the image wallet, um, because if you want to trade, for example, um, Ethereum against Bitcoin, um, and the settlement is done client side and non-custodial, this means that like, like a normal user of this exchange would need to have like a Bitcoin wallet and an Ethereum wallet. Um, if he wants to trade a third asset, then he needs to have a third wallet. And so this really doesn't scale. Um, but with the, with the image wallet, it's essentially just one file. So one file for any network. So like, um, yeah, the idea was that it's, it's really user friendly. Um, so by the way, you, you can use it. So if you go to agora.trade, um, you can register. Um, and, and yeah, kind of last step is, is Catalasus, which really like, uh, is really all of those derivatives essentially. Um, and, and, and yeah, I'd like to make everything as, as user friendly as possible. Um, so like all, all of, all of these three tools are like kind of like they're building on top of each other. Um, so, for example, that you can list like a future contract um, on Agora, like a Catalasus future contract on Agora, um, and like you, you hold all of your, your assets within the image wallet. Okay, so that was essentially it. Um, many thanks. Um, if, if you want to uh, learn more, more about Catalasus, um, like all of the papers are published, like since yesterday, um, on catalasus.com. Thanks very much. Uh, hi, could you explain a little bit more about this exchange? Uh, so you get an example exchanging Ether and a Bitcoin, and it's in a wallet. So how do you do, how do you do the uh, swap? Is it an atomic swap, 
or yeah, exactly. So so right now we're we're using um, an atomic swap, in particular hash time lock contract. Um, but like once once Polkadot is ready, like we can update the settlement engine as well, so that we can use like interchain uh, communication for for the settlement process. Yeah, sure. But are you using the uh, like core features of the Polkadot, or you're implementing it yourself? Sorry. You are implementing this exchange yourself, or you are using Polkadot internally? So yeah, we're implementing this ourselves. Um, right now, we're using hash time locked contracts. Um, but yeah, the idea is like once Polkadot is ready, we're going to upgrade. Um, ah, so, so you'll so get you'll get rid of your implementation and uh, adapt. Yeah, I mean, like a large a large part of the implementation we can keep. Um, we just need to like update the settlement engine, really. Okay, and the second thing. Um, um, what's your adv the advantage of building your own virtual machine? Why you don't use Evosm or anything like Polkadot is doing? Um, so it makes like so like if you if you want to do an an an, an upgrade or an update, like it makes everything much more fine grained. So like um, so substrate as it is right now, it's essentially like if you want to like update your runtime, you essentially swap modules, um, and like having everything in such a virtual machine like is. Um, like essentially allows allows you like to make very f fine grained uh, changes, and essentially within a transaction, really. Okay, but is this virtual machine based on an existing virtual machine, or you are? Um, yeah, pretty much. Which one? Um, Basum, I guess. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you explain how the Actus contracts are are going to work with Catalatos? Catalatos, if they're going to be built in into the protocol or um, if there, there will be like smart contracts. Yeah, so th there are essentially um, objects in, in Enso, in the virtual machine. Um, and really like, like objects or like, um, yeah, so, so essentially they're, they're like contract templates, I guess. And that's, that's really just like an instance of, of such a contract. And that's y y like you, you can more or less look at them as smart contracts. Um, Um, so you said you use uh, your own consensus, and uh, it's uh, optimistic consensus. So if I am a bad actor and I try to act uh, ni nicely uh, when the, somebody is validating me, and I cooperate with, for example, many of, of peers, uh, how is it going to prevent me to, to do bad things? Um, yeah, so like there is an entire section on, on, on kind of attacks in the papers. Um, um, yeah, it's probably best to just have a look in there. About the attacks? Um, yeah, I mean, th th there's like a range of attacks. Um, like, I don't know them by heart, unfortunately. But yeah, the, the paper is very detailed, so. Um, so how does uh, native support for oracles work, or how does it look like? Sorry? How does native support for oracles, it was mentioned on the... Oh, slide. yeah, so essentially, like, we, we're using, um, um, or like, we, so, so this is all research, right? Very little, very little implementation. Um, but yeah, so the idea is essentially to use, like, Chainlink um, to, like, for, for, a, for, a, for a data source, essentially. But yeah, like this is, so in, yeah, in particularly the Oracle, um, it's, that's very little done actually on it. All right, thank you so much, Reto. Thank you. Um, it's great